Okay, a properly installed termination requires a minimum of six and a half to six and five eighths inches of core insulation between the semicon layer and the butt of the lug with a minimum gap of approximately an eighth of an inch between the core insulation and the butt of the lug. I just heard it. I just heard it too. Didn't trip, didn't trip you. There it is. See it burning? See it? See it? Not really. It's actually on fire. Down low, a little lower. See it's on fire? Oh, wow. Don't get too close. I won't. <laughs> See, it's looking for ground. It's looking for ground. Or it's... How many volts you at? I'm at 0.8 kV. Oh, 0.8 kV. Where are you at now? 1.2. 1.2 kb. Yeah, it's just bleeding off the ground. It's smoking. Don't get no closer. You still at 1.2? It just tripped. It just tripped? What happened to the machine? It tripped the thermal overload. How often does that happen? Never. It's never happened to you before on this never machine? Never happened to me before. Okay, this is an example of a cable that was returned to your office that failed in the field. Um, it appears that this cable has been improperly cut back for the installation of a dead brake boot. This particular cable right here is a proper example of a cutback. This cable has an excessive amount of core conductor exposed and an insufficient amount of core insulation between the semiconductive layer and the core conductor. Which causes? Which causes the cable to fault out in this area right here, uh, which happened when we performed high pot testing of this cable. Okay. Um, Anything else you can point out with regards to the back here? Um, the ground braid kit is improperly installed. This spring and the braided conductor should have been applied in this position and not over the jacket. Over the overall jacket. 